Greetings in the name of Christ. My name is Walter Meyer III. We will be going over the Old Testament reading for Proper 13, Exodus chapter 16, verses 2 through 15. And doing the translation, that will be our main work. It's a longer text, but after that, then, there will be just a few brief thoughts with regard to homiletical preparation. Let's go to the text. Now, in verse 2, we have the Hebrew verb loon, so it's lamed wow nun. And this is a text-critical issue, whether it was originally in the Hifil or in the Nifal. Fortunately, it doesn't make any difference for us because in both stems, the verb means to murmur. We have what follows, then, the subject of that verb, all the assembly of the children of Israel. Uh, that's regarded as a plurality, you know, a number of individuals, and therefore the verb is plural. So putting this all together, and all the assembly of the children of Israel murmured all against Moses and against Aaron in the wilderness. Next verse. The subject here, B'nai Yisrael. The children of Israel, now coming to the verb, said to them. Now, literally, me here means, oh, that, and then the verb yitain from the verb nathan to give, oh, that one would give our death. Uh, muthenu here is actually the call infinitive construct with the suffix. But putting that into better English, Oh, that we had died, then v'yad Yahweh, by the hand of Yahweh, be'eretz Mitzrayim, in the land of Egypt. And now we have this infinitive construct with the preposition at the front and then the suffix at the end. When we sat all sir habasar, by... And now this is a singular, but I'm going to see it as a collective. In other words, singular in form, but plural in meaning. By the pots of flesh, or by the pots of meat, the meat pots, the pots in which the meat was boiled. When we ate, so the same thing here, an infinitive construct, preposition and suffix. When we ate lechem, bread to the full or to satisfaction. Key because then the verb yatsa, and this is a hifil, you have brought Othanu, us out to this wilderness. So hamith bar hazeh. And then the verb muth here, a hifil infinitive construct, to kill, and now the object. All, the con all this congregation, so kahal, ha-kahal, hazeh, all this congregation, and then bara'av, with hunger. Next verse. Yahweh said to Moses, Behold, I am causing to rain. So the verb matar this is a hifil participle. I'm causing to rain for you. And we notice that the chem here is actually the plural, for you. So for Moses and for the Israelites, for you, lechem, bread from the heavens, or you can say bread from heaven. And the people will go out, the verb lakat, and they will collect, now literally, the thing of a day in its day. Uh, they will collect a day's worth each day. Lama'an, in order that, now the verb nasa, this is a PL, in order that I might test them. Now the enu suffix here is actually a reference back to people. And technically people is a masculine singular noun. And therefore this suffix here, enu, which is third masculine singular. But uh, putting this into English idiom, talking about the people, in order that I might test them, 
And now the interrogative hey on the verb ye lake. Whether they will walk, so from the verb hala, whether, whether they will walk in my Torah or in my law im lo or not. So again, this interrogative hey here puts this into a question whether uh, they will walk in my law or not. And again, ye lake here is actually a singular verb going back to ha'am. But I'm translating this, you know, in natural English. You know, the people thinking of a plurality, whether they will walk in my Torah or not. Can you please raise the screen? Wahaya, and it will be on the sixth day that they will prepare, so this is the verb kun, uh, hifil, that they will prepare that which they bring, so the verb bo, hifil, and it will be mishneh, double over what they collect day by day. So the previous days, they're just the day's worth, but now this will be double over what they collect each day. Next verse. And Moses said, and Aaron, to all the children of Israel, Erev, at evening you will know, so the verb yada, you will know that Yahweh, the verb yatsa, hifil, brought you out from the land of Egypt. And at morning, you will see, so the verb ra'ah, eth kavod Yahweh, the glory of Yahweh. And then we have now the verb shama with the preposition at the front and the suffix at the end. This is the call uh, infinitive construct. In that, or because he has heard, in that he has heard, because he has heard, and now we have the noun derivative from the verb loon, your murmurings against Yahweh. And now this next phrase, nachnu ma, literally, and we what? And what are we that, and then again this verb loon, that you murmur against us. Next verse. And Moses said, so the verb here is nafan, and this is the call infinitive construct with the preposition at the front. When Yahweh gives to you in the evening flesh or meat to eat, and bread in the morning to satisfaction, in that Yahweh has heard, so that same phrase that we had before, uh, because Yahweh has heard your murmurings with which you are murmuring, this is now a participle, with which you are uh, murmuring, against him, and so this is actually the im ending here, so it's a masculine plural participle with which you are murmuring against him. And what are we? Not against us, alenu, not against us do, are your murmurings. So again, that noun with the suffix, are your murmurings, key all Yahweh, but against Yahweh. Please raise the screen. And Moses said to Aaron, say to all the assembly of the children of Israel, draw near before Yahweh because he has heard, and again this noun, 
your murmurings. Why he, and it was when Aaron spoke to all the assembly of the children of Israel, that they turned, so the verb pana, to or toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of Yahweh appeared. So the nifal here, the verb ra'a, appeared in the cloud. And this is the cloud that uh, led them, you know, out of Egypt. Uh, this is the cloud, uh, cloud by day, fire by night, that accompanied them in their wilderness wandering. Going to the next portion here. And Yahweh said or spoke to Moses, saying, Shamati, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel speak to them, saying, between the two evenings. Now, I say this is the two evenings. Here's the definite article, the noun Erev. But with the I am ending, that's the dual ending. So technically this is between the two evenings, and I'll come back to that later on. And then the verb a call. You will eat meat, and in the morning you will be satisfied or you will be filled with bread, lechem. And you will know that I am Yahweh your God. Please raise the screen again. And it happened in the evening that, now this word, shlau, that means quail, uh, that the quail went up, you know, the, 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 all this massive amount of birds, uh, the quails, you know, went up. This is a singular, so the verb is a singular. The quails went up and covered. So the verb kasa covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer, the layer of dew. So shikva is layer and then tal is dew. There was the layer of dew, saviv, round about the camp. Next portion here. The layer of dew went up, and behold, on the face of the wilderness, so that means on the ground, on the wilderness ground, dak is an adjective meaning fine. There was a fine, flake-like thing, fine as the frost. Now, this is an unusual form here. So you see what it is, mechuz pas. And scholars are divided as to how to analyze that. Uh, whether this is from uh, a verbal root, the chet, the samic, and the pe, and it's a rare, unusual stem, or whether this is actually a, a rare example of four consonants to the verbal root, the chet, the samic, the pe, and the samic, and this should be analyzed, for example, as a pu'al participle. So there's debate as to how to quite analyze that, but uh, here's a possible translation. A fine flake-like thing, and then fine as the frost. Kafor is frost on the ground. Can you please raise the screen? The children of Israel saw, and they said, each to his brother or each to his fellow, man who, and man is the older form for what? So we're used to ma, so maim, hey. Uh, this is the older form. What is it? What is it? And of course, we get from that, you know, manna. What is it? Because they did not know, and here's ma now, what it was. And Moses said to them, it is the bread which Yahweh has given to you for food. All right, thus far the text.
Now, I said I'd come back to this matter of the two evenings, and I'm quoting here, I'm reading here from the commentary, Exodus commentary by R. Allen Cole. And he has a nice summary here of this issue. So this phrase, literally, between the two evenings, Jewish scholars are not agreed as to the exact meaning. The phrase is also used of the time for the regular evening sacrifice, Exodus 29, verse 39, and of the time for lighting the lamps in the meeting tent, Exodus 30, verse 8. The orthodox piety of Pharisaic Judaism understood the meaning as being between the time in the afternoon when the heat of the sun lessens, say 3 or 4 p.m., and sunset. Other groups preferred the time between sunset and dark. And then there are other exp explanations as well. Uh, personally, I like to go with the explanation that this was the time between sunset and dark. And now just a few homiletical considerations. Uh, well-known text, manna. And of course, we also think then of John chapter 6 and how Christ references this text in Exodus in his discourse in John chapter 6. Key thoughts. God takes care of hunger. And God takes care of hunger, which is both physical and spiritual. And God provides food, and people eat and live. So one thought is that God provided food for the Israelites in the wilderness, quail and then the manna. The manna was ongoing throughout their wilderness wandering. And this took care of their physical hunger in a marvelous way. This was miraculous provision from the Lord. In like manner, God takes care of our physical hunger. Perhaps we're not seeing miracles, but our having food, our having enough to eat, of course, is just as much because of God's might, because of His grace and mercy, as it was for the Israelites having food. So all that we have, our daily bread, is from God. And He takes care of our physical hunger. But then with regard to spiritual hunger, God provided for the Israelites in that regard through the ministry of Moses through the word he gave to them through Moses. And God performed miracles for the Israelites, and these were tremendous proof of his power, of his being God, of his love for them, of his being the covenant God who would keep all of his covenant promises, including the key promise, the basis for the covenant, the reason for the covenant, the coming Messiah who would be born of the children of Israel. So through the ministry of of Moses, who was responsible, of course, for the first portion of Scripture, the Pentateuch, uh, through the word God gave to them through Moses, the people then were satisfied spiritually. Their spiritual hunger was dealt with. Now, going to John chapter 6, uh, Jesus talks about spiritual hunger as well, and that he, Jesus, is the bread from heaven and people spiritually eating Christ, spiritually eating this bread, grasping Christ in faith, these people will live. They will eat and they will live forever because of Jesus the Savior. So again, this well-known connection between Exodus 16, bread from heaven, and then John chapter 6, bread from heaven. And, of course, in John chapter 6, Jesus is the bread from heaven. And people eat this bread and live forever. So I hope you have fun with this text in Exodus, and especially as you bring on also John chapter 6. And may God bless your meditation on this text, your preaching on this text, and your teaching it. The Lord be with you.